folks. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be working with resin. So the first thing we need is a pair of disposable gloves. Next, we will need our silicone measuring cups. And you don't need to use silicone measuring cups if you don't have them available. Just whatever you have for a mixing cup will work. I like these because they're easy for cleanup and I can reuse them over and over. Then you will need a stir stick. I purchased these at the dollar store. Then you'll need a culinary torch. I purchased this one from Amazon and I'll leave the link in the description below. The last thing we need is our resin and our hardener. So resin is identified with a white cap. And then the hardener is identified with a black cap. Be very careful not to mix up the caps with the bottles because you'll never get the cap off again. I use art resin on all of my stones and I know that it takes approximately five milliliters of resin and hardener for each stone. So that means I have to measure out 2.5 milliliters of resin to 2.5 milliliters of hardener. Then you have to mix these for two minutes. Now the stir stick that I use has got like a little edge on it so I can scrape the sides and scrape the bottom as I'm stirring. It's very important to get it mixed up as evenly as possible so that you don't have any problems later on. Now what I do, because sometimes counting in your head or watching a timer for two minutes can sometimes take forever. So to add some fun to it, I sing my ABCs. Sometimes I sing them out loud, but most of the time it's in my head. I sing them twice because it takes about one minute to sing the song from beginning to end. So it's a good way to judge how long you've been mixing. Now, if the ABCs are not your song of choice, you can use any nursery rhyme like Baba Black Sheep or Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, whatever your preference is. They usually take about one minute to go through the song. So as long as you sing it twice, you've got your two minutes or mix it up. Sing ABCs with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Either way, you're going to get yourself to two minutes. While doing this, remember to always scrape the sides and scrape the bottoms because you do really want to get this all mixed up. You'll notice that the resin has a bit of a milky color to it or foggy color. That's okay. That's just the bubbles that are inside the resin that you've created while stirring. And don't worry about that. The only thing you need to worry about is any of the bubbles that do escape from your mixing cup. Definitely wear a mask. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. So the consistency is looking good. I'm up to my two minutes. So I'm ready to put this resin on my rocks. With the resin ready to go, I grab the first rock. So I check it over, make sure there's no dust or any hair or anything like that on it. And then I pour usually three, maybe four scoops of uh, the resin using my stir stick. And I smear it all over the place. And now this one has gems on it. So I have to make sure that the resin is in between each of the gems and around them. So that way there is no break in the resin whatsoever. Then on the back, I just grab a, a smaller scoop and I rub it all over the back. I'm not too concerned. I just want it covered, but I want the top to be thick and vibrant because once it's dry, it's supposed to look like glass. I use the red mini solo cups for my rocks to cure on. They're perfect little sands to keep them up off the surface and allows the resin to dry evenly. I use my culinary torch to pop any of the air bubbles that have risen to the surface. I will likely do this once or twice more before I let it cure overnight. I cover it with a cake topper that you get when you buy a cake from the grocery store. This is to avoid any dust or hair setting into the resin. Well, it's been 24 hours, so let's see how this worked out. I take the little red Solo cup off and it leaves a little ring on the back, but that's okay because I cover that with felt. The front is what I'm concerned about and it is so smooth, it's like glass. Cleanup is gonna be so easy because I left the leftover resin in the cup to cure as well. And because it's a silicone cup, I can turn it inside out so that I can clean the inside of the cup. Now these sheets, they're very, very thin and are very staticky, so they sometimes can get messy. But I just keep working away at the cup until eventually I get the bottom pulled out. 
And there you have it. It's all one piece, comes right out and is ready for the garbage. And for the final step of cleanup, I grab some duct tape. This stuff is great. So I just pull off one strip of it. You can use more if you need to, but I use one and I grab my silicone cup and all I do is I simply roll it over the tape. Silicone and resin do not stick to each other, but the tape will take it off and it's less mess because of the static. And it looks great. And then your cup is ready to go for the next pour. Check it out, it's all on the tape. And there you have it, folks.